right. Well, it's uh, Monday, and uh, I have just a few days before I'm going to leave for uh, Wisconsin to, to the show. So, um, as I showed in earlier videos before I was painting, I had crafted, cut out, and uh, fitted to the old squaw's body. And then I also have um, weights. If I look at this, you can see a little better. The weights that uh, it needed to take it down. And if I match it up here, this is how it's going to look with its keel. And the reason I have this up now is because I'm going to have to determine where I'm going to attach the keel and the um, stringer attachment. And um, I thought I'd just videotape my uh, process of going through the steps I'm going to need to figure this out. So I'm going to take two brass screws with shoulders um, to attach the keel. And then I'm also going to use a brass eye with a shoulder um, for the uh, stringer attachment. And when I, I hollowed this bird out, then I, um, before I glued this into place, I glued pieces of tupelo on the inside, I attached them, fitted them in, and um, so that when I did screw this keel on, I wouldn't have to worry too much about where it was going to be screwed in, um, other than I want to have the, um, I want to have the screws hit th those pieces of wood inside because if I if they hit that those pieces of wood they're not going to penetrate into the hollow portion of this decoy I want to keep that from happening um, so that's why I um, securely glued um, those wedges which met up with this plate and then when this plate got glued in, it was also glued to those pieces of wood. And then the glue filled in the, the space between the plate and the actual body of the bird opening. So this is another lead weight that I needed to bring the bird um, a little bit over to the uh, right. So. Um, in looking at this, I've got my pencil here, the stringer attachment doesn't have as long of a screw, and it's going to need to be, of course, up in the front. So, I'm thinking it needs to be about here. It's going to stick out about this far, and I might even, um, embed it a little further than I normally would just so that it's not sticking out quite so far. Then I have another shoulder screw that's going to go in and it does have a long screw and I've got my selection of brass screws
brass screws and eyes and shoulders. I'm going to go see if I can find a smaller screw out in my um, workshop in the garage. I'll be right back. Okay. I think I found what I needed out in the garage. This is a another brass eye hook. Just cleaning it up a little bit here. Probably be um, antiquing these but so that they're all looking old or not so shiny but I think this will work out really well on this keel and it'll only go in this far so I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm going to end up using these two inch screws. These two inch screws. Those are two, these are, those are a little bit different. Those are three inches. So I can put most of these things away. Now, I know what I'm going to be using. these for another project. Oh, I need two of the smaller I need two of these I believe will work best I open one of the other number two three inch Inch. Two inch have you been open to no. Ten two inch have you been open to no. Okay, so it wasn't easy finding all these. I didn't get them all in one spot. I had to Oops. Get it anyway, put this away because it has not been open. Put these away. And put these away. So, I think what we have now. up. Take a look at how far they're going to go in to that bottom of the bird and that, that works out really well. And as far as a shoulder, this works out. Good. 
it actually works out better than this, what I thought I should be using. That sticks out too far. We want it to be flush, or I want it to be flush, or fairly flush. I guess we can try one of these larger. Shoulders and see if that works better. I don't think it will. But I'll give it a go. Actually, that's a lot more flush. But then how would it look with the this? Does that look kind of wimpy now? back to this size. These two will look a lot more compatible, I think. So, that is my goal here. And the reason I'm looking at it today is because I need to drill the holes um, through the keel and then I need to get this keel sealed up with a lot of coats of deft. Um, <clears throat> some of the keels I've made in the past I've looked back on after 20 years and um, uh, they should have had a few extra coats of deft to seal them off better. So throw that now. This is a no-brainer. These are going to keep, if I hold this here, that's how far this uh, screw is going to go into the decoy. And my, I, I don't want to penetrate the inside cavity. So I'm putting this into here. I almost wonder if I need smaller screws. I think I might need to run to the hardware store. <laughs> These are good shoulders, but I think what I'll do is I'm going to run to the hardware store. Let's see what I can uh, find there, and I'll be back. Okay. I am back from the store. And I got some one inches, number eights, and ten. And uh, I think they're going to work out just perfect. These were two inches. I'm going to go with the one and a half. I didn't have three quarter or one and three quarter. So, get these put away and we'll take a look at how deep they're going to go. I'm going to have to get a bigger bag to put all these in. So these one and a half inch number eight brass screws are going to be perfect. So they will go in just about an inch, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, the, I will be drilling pilot holes for each one of these. This will go here. And I want the, this, especially these, to pass through. I don't want them to bite into the keel. I want them to bite into the, the duck itself. 
And the reason I'm doing that is there can be uh, competition between the keel and the bird and where you want the keel to be. Um, so if you have a hole that's um, large enough to accommodate the diameter of the screw, it can pass through and go directly to that. You can put it straight over. You, it just is an easier and more effective way to uh, place that. So, and then my stringer will be here. So, um, so the only process I have for this is eyeballing it. My keel is going to be attached right here. And I did want to make a really light line um, for a couple of reasons. First off, I need to um, sign my bird and then it'll tell me where I can sign it without the keel covering it. And um, <clears throat> it'll also help when I'm I'm going to have to drill pilot holes, so... So the bird at the bottom was approximately half an inch. The piece of wood that I added was three quarters. So I think that it should work out really well. The other thing that I'll be doing is once I put this keel on and I'm not going to take it off if ever, um, then I will put um, some rubber, not rubber cement, but some silicone glue into the pilot hole before I screw the keel in and that will hold, help hold to, to help seal it, um, the hole, so no water will get into this bird. Um, that would be a tragedy. I've seen it happen before and wouldn't wish that on anybody. So, uh, um, I'm going to need to drill the holes for the attachment of the keel. And the closest it can be, really. So then it'll be important that I get the right angle. I want to go directly perpendicular to the curve of the keel so everything sits flat. Um, so I think the best thing for me to do would be to As long as I know where that screw is going to go in, I can hold it here. Maybe I better put the shoulder on it just in case there's 
a difference in how deep the screw would go. I don't think there would be much, but you never know. So this much is going to go into the bird. About this much is the bird, and then there's that additional that I have. So I think it's going to work out really well. So if I mark the angle that I'm going to need, I should be able to look at it and go down. Do the same thing on the other side. Once I get these um, placed, I'm going to, and the drill, uh, holes drilled, then I'll be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, sand all of this off and then really seal it up well. This was temporarily um, sealed and then I made some adjustments after um, I test floated it. I got the size and shape to be correct, but then I also needed to sand it so it would sit flat. So if I put the bird on here and line it up the way it's supposed to be, it'll sit nice on the table um, and doesn't need to sit on the side. It's very, very stable sitting flat, which is one of my pet peeves is birds with keels always end up sitting um, askew, kiltered, because they can't sit flat because the keel's too thin. So it's partially why I use a wider keel. So Before I uh, <clears throat> drill these holes, I determined that this is 3 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and I need to be able to pass it through with no friction so I have a 3 16 inch drill bit I'm going to start with. The other thing I needed to consider is the angle um, of the hole. I want everything to be flush and sit right so um, in order to do that I needed to mark off the angle of the screw hole so I could know where to drill it. It's the same thing on this side. I've got and I determined angle by holding the shoulder up to the edge and drawing on either side of the, the screw. So you can see I've got and I'll zoom in a little. It's hard to see but I've got got the screw holes marked on the top or the bottom of the keel, I should say, right here and here. Then I drew lines through them, determined the angle of the screw, because I wanted to know where it, it, are these screws going to fall when they hit the bottom of the bird. So, if I drill straight in and use this as my guideline, It should Let's see. Of course I gotta draw it all the way up to know. So this is where it emerges. 
going to eyeball this based on my last line, which was a little close. So this would be where the hole's going to come through. And if I measure from the front of the breast to where the hole's going to come through, I've got like 29 on both sides, which is kind of nice. So if I go 29 from where the keel ends up, that'll put it right into the plate. And I go 29 from where it meets up with the front, and that also puts it straight into the plate, which has got the wood there um, below the plate, or above the plate, however you're looking at it. So now, since I've determined the angle that I need to put the drill, I can go ahead and drill my holes in. I'm going to go do that over at the workstation. Okay, so I got my holes drilled and they did come out where I wanted them to come out or close enough. And now if I put my screws in, you can see that they meet up flush and they have that much more to bite into my decoy. Do the same thing on the other side. That's perfect too. Alright, so that's how I'm going to attach the keels, keel. And then I'm going to stick with my hmm. Where did you go? There you are. Use this one. Or maybe I use this one. Decisions, decisions. <clears throat> but this is the process, at least mine. second hole, third hole, so I'm going to attach this fairly close to the other uh, screw attachment. So, with that done, I can go ahead and uh, do some sanding and get this, the beginning of this all sealed up. Alright, so now that I have um, the hardware squared away for my keel, um, I've uh, started, I got it all sanded, I got um, the uh, sealer on, I got the holes drilled for the screws, and I got the hardware patinaed to, with black patina so that's nice and dark instead of the shiny, shiny brass. Um, so that, uh, isn't part of the attaching, but it is part of the finishing. So I'm going to write that down. I left space in between on all of these steps so that when I remembered something, I could add it in. Finish. Heel seal. Okay. Um, 
Let's see here. So yesterday I feathered the grays and the warm whites of the side pocket. So that's done initially. Uh, I think I'm still going to bring it white. So I'm going to put a star and bring it lighten. Not, not bring it white, but I want to lighten all of it a little bit. Um, I did the primaries yesterday. So that was done with the carbon black. And um, I've done the one layer. I'm going to take care of that today. And I need to add splits to the cape and the um, and extend some of these feathers onto the others. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to start out today by adding another layer of um, paint on the bill. Uh, I've got, I had put two nice coats of um, the glaze medium once I had feathered and, and painted everything the way I want it. And I see like one little dot inside the nostril I want to take care of. Okay. Um, little mallet on the side. I'm just going over this once more. That was quite the feat getting in there, so be careful. Barely touching it. Okay. So, what I want to do is do a little more back and forth with a little bit lighter pink. I'm going to steal a little white and get some of that pink in there. This is going to be a bit lighter. And it's not going to go everywhere, and I don't want to wreck my nice soft edge, so I'll be leaving it away from there. side isn't lighter than the other.
If, it, if I don't pound it out, it removes the paint that I'm tapping onto here. And I don't want it to remove, to just stay there. Just see a little bit more pink, more red than I'm getting off of this pink. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to my palette and brighten that up just a little bit. Of course, I'm going to have to wash this brush out really well. I also mean having to go back over the entire thing. I feel like this is that red is the color that I see deep.
It's pretty pink right now, but what I want to do is I'm going to put some of the glazing medium on it <clears throat> because I want this to look layered. I want depth to start happening. And then I'll come back with the lighter pink after I do this coat of the glazing medium. It doesn't take much. And it'll probably really make this red pop. <clears throat> Sure. And we'll do the bottom. 